Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So we have made it. It is the last week of class for our flight mechanics discussion. So this is now week 10. So let's talk about what we're going to do to finish out the class. So coming to our roadmap, um, we've got two small kind of technical engineering discussions to have. So this first video is talking about what's known as the navigation equations. So to set the stage for this, I kind of want to back up and think about what we talked about um, basically in weeks six through nine. And in fact, to help that discussion, I've got homework number nine pulled up on the other side of the screen. So if you remember what we did last week, in, in fact, week six through nine, is we developed a nonlinear aircraft model of our system but that model only had nine states right in fact we listed them out and we were talking about this last week in homework nine we were talking about even rearranging the states or doing some type of similarity transformation but long story short there were only nine states right it was u v w p q r phi theta and then psi is this last state right here so there were four longitudinal states four lateral directional states and one sort of leftover state for a total of nine states and if you think about this, really what we were developing earlier is we had um, three rotational positions, right? We had phi theta psi, we had three rotational velocities, that was PQ and R, and we had three translational velocities, that was UVW. And the reason we were able to get away with this is because we had basically developed a model which its state dynamics does not uh, it's not a function of, of, of translational position, meaning this model behaves the same at any X, Y, Z location, which I guess sort of makes sense for a first cut of an aircraft model, right? Because really, if you have an aircraft that's flying, um, you know, at one location and you just move this, you know, 200 feet to the left or 200, or 200 feet to the right, it's not going to change the dynamics, right? Now, however, if you it, take that same argument and stretch it to the extreme, now we start getting a little bit more uh, questionable, especially in the altitude or the Z dimension, right? Because right now, the model we had earlier, it behaves the same at an altitude of zero and at an altitude of 10,000. And for those of you who are pilots, you know an aircraft as it moves up and down throughout the atmosphere, it's not going to behave the same. So long story short, the model that we had developed in weeks six through nine was simplified and somewhat deficient, right? There's no atmosphere model. There's nothing in there. That all of the equations of motion, they had no dependence on X, Y, Z translational position, okay? So what we would want to do now is I would like to discuss what are known as the navigation equations in this video. This is gonna show us how we can add those three states of position north, position east, and position down, AKA negative altitude, into our model. So what we're gonna be able to do at the end of this discussion is really complete our full six degree of freedom system which has 12 states so that's what this discussion is okay now that being said the three positional states that we're going to maintain are these um cartesian coordinates so to speak right it's a position north position east position down or an xyz if you want to think about it that way and that's fine for most applications but again, for our aircraft, we're flying over the surface of Earth, and what might be more interesting is instead of keeping track of its position using a um, kind of Cartesian linear distance from some arbitrary origin, we all know that the way you describe the position of um, something on Earth, right, is we all talk about latitude and longitude. So that's what I want to talk about here in the next video is, okay, how can we take the system we already have and again, we're going to augment it and add some dynamics so we can keep track of the latitude and longitude um, of the aircraft. And again, you'll notice here that we use this description of geodetic coordinates. So in here, we're going to see the difference between geodetic and geocentric latitude. Um, so again, this is a interesting discussion because at the end of the day, we will now be able to describe the position of the vehicle, not just in, in, in Cartesian XYZ, but also in sort of a polar type format where we have geodetic latitude and terrestrial longitude as measurements. So at the end of this, this is the end of our end, whoops, sorry, this is the end of our engineering discussion for the class. This will have all of the equations in motion, our, our, uh, our model will be fairly complete, and we'll be able to keep track of where the vehicle is um, on the surface of Earth. Now, that being said, 
the next thing that we're going to want to do, uh, remember I talked about this very day one, week one, we talked about where we're going, right? I wanted to start with the end in mind and the end state was we wanted to build a flight simulation system where you can fly your vehicle around your RCAM aircraft using a joystick and then watching the output um, in some type of uh, visualization environment. So by the time we finish up through 10B, you have all the equations of motion and you have a Simulink model that can run, we can simulate it, we can trim it, we can linearize it, we can do all of this analysis on our computer. But now I want to do something fun and actually integrate a human operator experience into this uh, system. So that's what all these videos down here are talking about. It's just kind of some fun bells and whistles. So let me just pull something up that might help us um, visualize some of this. So for example, you know, in this video, uh, MATLAB 19, we're going to talk about how can I use use a joystick now to feed as inputs to my Simulink model. So this is going to allow us to literally fly the vehicle um, by hand using um, a, an external joystick. So this will be kind of fun. Then after that, if we're able to input and fly the vehicle around, it might be nice to see what the aircraft is actually doing. So there's a couple of ways to skin this cat. One of them is to use what's called Simulink 3D animation. So it is a native Simulink package that's going to allow you to consume signals from your model and then send them to a Simulink visualization package or a VR world or a virtual reality world within Simulink. And you'll be able to fly around your vehicle and you'll be able to see what it looks like all within the Simulink environment. So that's the goal of this video. Okay. Now, if we want to continue getting even more fancy, let's talk about now sending this data out. Instead of uh, visualizing and rendering the scenario in Simulink, let's go out to another external flight simulator program like Flight Gear. So that's what this video is talking about. In fact, that's what these next two videos are. It's basically getting this whole system to work with Flight Gear so we can fly the aircraft using our joystick. We can have our engineering model crunch the numbers. We can then send out those states from our engineering model out to the flight gear package which is now going to visualize the aircraft and its attitude and orientation and its position right it's lat long because now we know how to compute the latitude and longitude okay and then finally the last topic of the class is sort of the uh, the the another way to visualize this instead of using flight gear you can also use um, other packages like x-plane to do this so feel free to watch this video if you're interested in getting your vehicle flying and being rendered and visualized in x-plane so there you have it um that's pretty much it uh there's not a whole lot else to say other than i hope everybody enjoyed the class um if you think about what we did this was actually a lot to cover in just one quarter or 10 weeks of discussion right we started from scratch we basically had a rudimentary understanding of um flight mechanics and aerodynamics and equations of motion and we basically took that and built up an entire six degree of freedom rigid body uh non-linear aircraft simulation we we coded that all up in Simulink. We built an actual model. We then talked about all the tools that we need for in terms of engineering, um, equations of motion and analysis to develop that model as well as what to do with the model once we had it, right? We were then able to trim the aircraft at a given operating condition. We used optimization techniques to do that. We then went ahead and linearized that model using a numerical perturbation routine um, and some MATLAB tools. And then we were able to use that linear model to conduct all types of different analysis like looking at the modes of the vehicle and how they relate to stability and all sorts of fun things like that. And then finally, we're now at the point where we can visualize and build our full flight simulator. So at the end of this class, what you've done is built from scratch, effectively a um, you know fairly robust, full featured flight simulator in the MATLAB Simulink environment. And we've got all the engineering tools and analyses that go into the development as well as the analysis of said system. So I hope everyone had fun. Please let me know if anyone has questions. As we know, the last thing that we're doing in the class is a final demonstration that should all be on your calendars. So I'm excited to see what people end up doing and what they want to do for their um, final discussion slash demo. Um, like I said, yeah, send me questions if you have any um, concerns. Otherwise, it was an absolute pleasure having everyone along for the last 10 weeks. And I hope I'll see you at a future talk either here on YouTube or in a future class um, of mine um on campus so with that being said uh i think this is probably a great spot to leave it i think i'll sign off talk to you later bye